Hi, I'm Chef Lynn and welcome to the Flavor Secrets Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you something that you can use to wow your friends. We're making a summer crab salad and it's a composed salad. The only special equipment you need to find is a ring and we'll talk more about that in a minute. This dish has simple ingredients, it's easy, it's beautiful, and it's delicious. People will accuse you of buying it from a restaurant and bringing it home. All right, so let's get started. We, as I said, we have simple ingredients here. We're using some plum tomatoes. We're using some pepper. We're using some avocados, some lime, a little bit of shallot, which is a type of onion, crab, and some creme fraiche. And that's what we'll use for our composed salad. Then we'll add a little bit of a green, green salad with it that has some orange in it, some yellow beet, and some feta. And then we'll learn how to make a simple balsamic dressing to drizzle over the top of it. And the last ingredient that we'll use is cilantro, which is the fresh version of coriander. And we'll use this for garnish and we'll also mix it in with the tomato. Okay, so first thing we need to do is to assemble our ingredients before we put the salad together. So we need to start by making some tomato concasse. Now don't run away, that's just a fancy French term for peeled, seeded, and diced tomatoes. So I'm gonna show you a way to do that really quickly and easily. You don't have to sit there and try to peel this tomato, which can be really cumbersome and problematic. We've got some boiling water going on here. I'm gonna turn it off now because I just want it to be hot. Then I'm gonna make a little X using this tomato knife and drop it into the boiling water. I'll go ahead and do two of them even though I probably only need one. That's gonna stay in there for just about 20 seconds. If you don't believe me, you can stand there and count. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and it'll be just about 20 seconds, maybe a little bit longer. While we're waiting, I'll show you this knife. This is a special tomato knife, and I love it because it's very, it's extremely sharp and works really well for slicing into tomatoes or for making very, very thin pieces of tomato for sandwiches, etc. And I don't know if you can see on the camera, but it's got a kind of a, a combination of really straight razor and then little bits. You'll, you'll have straight and then a, a longer piece and then straight and a longer piece, straight and a longer piece. So it's a very, very sharp knife made specifically for tomatoes. If you don't need, you don't have to have that, of course, but I just, I always like to show you a little bit of equipment. All right, I haven't been counting 1,001, 1,002, but what I'm looking for here is just to see when the skin starts to separate from the meat of the tomato. And I can look, I, oh, here it's done. See how it's just started to split there? As soon as that happens, I wanna take it out and plunge it into ice water, both of them. They're both splitting now, so I'll plunge them into ice water. Now we can get rid of this hot pan back here. Let me just dump the water. Oh, actually I wanna save that. No, I guess I don't, yes I do. All right, I'm gonna save that hot water for something in a minute. Okay, so now we're gonna let our tomato cool. Why the ice water? Remember I said that concasse is diced tomato. I didn't say mush tomato. So if you let your tomato cook too long, you're gonna end up with tomato mush, not tomato concasse. So we wanna cool that down right away so to stop the carryover cooking, okay? So now let's, it doesn't take very long for it to cool. I can already feel that it's cool. So we can go ahead and take our tomato out of there. Now look how easily it peels. All you have to do is grab this and peel it right off and you've got this beautiful, gorgeous tomato. If you do this with cherry tomatoes, then you can slice those in half and put them on a salad and that's really pretty too. Um, looks like you're just an expert at peeling even though you might not be. All right, now I'm gonna cut this tomato in half and then in half again. I'll bring this back up here. And then all I have to do is cut out this thick part in the middle, which is called the rib. And at that point I can take my thumb and all the seeds come out. You can see that what I'm left with is a pretty petal, which also looks really nice on salads if you wanna to go to the trouble, especially if you do it with the tiny little cherry tomato. Okay, so this will take me just a second to get through these two tomatoes. Let me peel and seed these or cut out the rib and seed these. Drop all the seeds in here. All right, and then we have 
one more tomato over here. Again, we can grab it on the end and pull the skin right off. Isn't that a great trick? This one could have stayed in there like two seconds longer. It's pulling a little bit harder than the other one. It's always a good idea too if you have a nice sharp knife to grab it with a knife and then pull it down. Then we'll do the same thing. Cut it in half. Cut it in half again. Cut out the rib. And out go the seeds. Okay, now that's probably plenty for one salad, but I'll go ahead and finish this. As long as I have these here, then they'll be done. One more, followed by the last one. Okay, there we go. So it can be very quick to peel and seed your tomatoes. All right, now all we need to do is to dice those tomatoes. So whenever you want to make dice, I'm get my cilantro off my knife here, but it's, this is going together so it doesn't really matter. Whenever you want to dice, the first thing you do is make a julienne strip. So a julienne strip is simply a long, thin strip, and then cut across the other way, like that. And we'll pick this up, put it over here to wait. And for one salad, I'm going to use one more piece of tomato. Julienne strip first and then come across the side with your knife. Always helps if you're using a knife that's longer than what it is you want to cut. Okay, so that's enough. And then I have a little bit of chopped cilantro here that I'll mix right in there, just maybe that much. A couple tablespoons of chopped cilantro. And I'll move these other tomatoes back here up here for a second. The next thing we want to do is to mix in a little bit of the shallot in, to, in with the tomato. Okay? Well, this is a shallot. A shallot has a couple of bulbs. In this case, this one had three bulbs, and they were all put together like that. I'm just going to use the middle size bulb because that's about enough for one person to eat. Okay. Now, to cut that tiny little bit of shallot, the easiest way is to just rock my French knife, which is what a French knife is made for. This tip is for rocking. This flat part right here is really the cutting surface. Okay, so I'm just going to go through this until it's really tiny. Be careful if you keep your knives really sharp, which you should because you probably will cut yourself less if your knives are sharp. Your knife isn't slipping around. And as you can't see, but I, I'll tell you, I have a wet cloth underneath my cutting board. And the reason is that stabilizes the cutting board. Because most people cut themselves when something slips. Either the cutting board or their knife is wet or their hand slips down the knife. Or they're not watching, they're cutting like this. Okay, so now I've got that little bit of shallot and I'll just mix that in with my tomato and with my cilantro. Just do that with your fingers if you want. And we can let that sit to marinate together just a little bit. Okay? All right. Next, we need to deal with our avocado. Now I have these avocados in a bag for a reason. They weren't quite as ripe as I wanted when I bought them at the store, so I put them in a bag to try to ripen them. Now most people think that if you leave your avocados sit in the sun, they're going to ripen, but this is really the fastest way. As they ripen, they release a gas, and that gas ripens the other fruit that's in the same bag at the same time, and it causes them to ripen faster. So you can see this one is nice and ripe. Now did you see as I was doing that, I pressed into the, um, what do you call that thing? I can't think at the moment. The pit. <laughs> Pressed into the pit with a knife. So then when my avocado came apart, the pit came right out. Okay? So I'll just throw that back here too. And then it's simple to get the avocado out. You just need to take a large spoon. I'm going to take like a tablespoon size spoon here and fit it in the bottom of the avocado like this. And then scoot around it and drop it out. Do the same thing. Now, probably a half, a half of an avocado is enough for one salad, but I'm going to go ahead and do the entire avocado. See how clean that, cleanly that came out? 
I'll do the entire avocado because avocado will turn brown if you leave it exposed to the air. So you want to make sure you get some kind of an acid on it, a fruit acid. And for that, we'll use this lime. So again, I want to dice this avocado. So first I'll make some julienne strips. And then I'll cut across to turn it into dice. Same thing with this other half. Julienne strips first. and then I'll cut across into dice. Now I don't care if they're exactly square, so I didn't cut down the strip again. You could do that if you want it to be exactly square, but I don't really care. So now I'm gonna move this over to a dish. Oops, caught it with the end of my knife. Move the avocado all over to a dish, and then what I have to do, as I said, is to get some fruit acid onto this so that it won't turn brown. Now sometimes when you open up an avocado, you'll see black strips in it. Just go ahead and cut around those. Okay, I'm gonna put my knife here. There we go. Okay, now we wanna cut this lime in half, and I don't see any seeds in there, but just to be safe, I'll come back here and grab a little sieve, and then squirt the lime juice all over the avocado so that it's all covered. And the purpose of the sieve is obviously just to catch the seeds. This is a gorgeous little lime. It's got lots of juice. Okay, now we'll put that back there. Grab another spoon, not there here, and mix this up so that the lime gets all over the avocado. The other thing that the lime does in this salad is it gives it a gorgeous, really gorgeous, fresh taste. I've served this at a lot of dinner parties lately and it always gets absolutely rave reviews. Okay, so we've got our concasse, we, we've got our concasse, peeled, seeded, diced tomato. We've got our avocado, creme fraiche can stay where it is, and then we've got our crab. For this salad, you wanna buy premium crab. This happens to be chicken of the sea, but there are lots of brands out there. I would say just be careful about where you buy it because of price. Some places it costs two or three times more than others. So make sure you look at the price um, when you go shopping for crab. And what you wanna see when you open it is these big, huge lumps of gorgeous crab meat. The last thing I want to tell you about crab is make sure to keep it very cold. It has an expiration date on the can, be sure and check it, and always keep it in the refrigerator even though it's canned. Keep it cold right up until the last minute when you're ready to serve it. Okay, now let, we have one more thing to do before we start composing our salad, and that is to deal with this cilantro. Okay, now as you can see, I, didn't, I don't have any stems in this. I only have the leaves, so to make the garnish, what I did is I just picked off the leaves like that and then I went through them with the French knife like you saw me do before, just like this, hang on to the end and then come down until they're very tiny. And I went through this a lot more than you might expect. I went through this like six times in order to get it really, really fine so that it'll all mix in beautifully and make a pretty garnish. As you can see though, and we've talked about this before but I'll show you one more time, this kind of clumps together. If you see a green garnish like this from a leaf in a restaurant and you see how it sprinkles, it's kind of clumpy, it wouldn't look like that on top of a restaurant dish, would it? So there's a way, there's something we can do to fix that and what we can do is wash it again. So I'm going to pick up my cilantro. You can do this also with parsley or any other green leaf vegetable. And then I'm gonna walk back to the sink and I'm gonna go ahead and roll this up. Use kind of a thick, clean cloth because if you don't, when you twist it and pull, you can pull the cloth right apart and lose all your hard work. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> okay, so now I'm coming back here by the sink and I'm turning on cold water. And I know this is counterintuitive because it seems like if something is clumpy, the last thing you'd wanna do is wash it. So I'm washing and then twisting the water out and I'm starting to see a little bit of green come out into the rag. And what that green is, is chlorophyll. 
and it's the chlorophyll that's causing it to clump. So now, when I open up my wet cloth, what I've got here, look at that amazing difference. It does stain your cloth, by the way, though, so you might want to just keep one cloth for this purpose, but look at how it sprinkles now. It's beautiful. And that will be our garnish when we finish composing the salad. Okay, so now let's put this puppy together. And what I'm gonna use is a really pretty salad plate. So go get out something like a really large dinner plate or even a charger that you think is really pretty or any kind of different shaped dish like this one is square. This one comes from Wildly Delicious Fine Foods in Canada, um, even though it says made in China, of course. And um, I, I like this one for this particular salad because it shows off the, the work that I've done in order to build it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is take our avocado, and as you can see, it's been sitting out here in the air, but there's no black on it or no brown. It looks really great because we mixed it in with the lime juice. If you don't have a lime and you have a lemon, use lemon juice. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do, and I don't need to put any Pam or spray or anything inside this ring. First thing I'll do is put down the avocado. So for one person, you need about a quarter of an avocado, I would say. We had, or maybe a third of an avocado. I'm bringing this, I'm pushing the avocado to the side so that we'll have a clean edge. And then I'm building it up maybe about a half an inch. You can take that big piece out. If you want to chop this a little smaller, that certainly is fine too. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is grab another little spoon. May as well bring a few out here in case I need another one. And then I'll take this beautiful tomato concasse. And again, this is mixed with a little bit of the cilantro. In fact, we can even put a little bit more in there. And a little bit of shallot. If you want to make this for more than one person, just obviously multiply the ingredients by however many people you want to serve. So we had two plum tomatoes here. I would say you want to plan one tomato. Those were good sized plum tomatoes, but you want to plan about one per person. Okay, so now again, I don't know if you can see this, and I can't exactly tip it, but I've tried to keep the tomato off the side so that I'll have a pretty clean edge, and I've packed the tomato in so that it's right up against the sides of the ring. These rings can be found, I believe they have them at Sur La Table. I believe I've seen them there. Um, this particular one that I'm using is a stainless steel one that's seamless that I love and it came from jbprince.com. J is in Jack, B is in boy, Prince is in princewilliam.com. Okay, a little bit of cilantro here and I want to keep my, my plate clean. Okay, now I'm going to take these gorgeous pieces of lump crab and fit them in around the ring. And while I'm doing this, I'm watching for shells. I haven't found any shells in my crab lately. I think they're doing a pretty good job, but it's not a given. You always need to keep your eye out for shells. And if I'm doing this for a lot of people, I would actually empty this into a dish and um, go ahead and check it first and then put all the crab in. If you're making this for more than two people, you're going to get down to a section where you have the other smaller pieces of crab. So you would want to portion out the larger lump pieces among however many you're making. Okay, now the last thing we'll do is we'll take our creme fraiche. And then I don't want my creme fraiche to be um, adulterated because I'm going to touch the crab with this. So I'm gonna take some of the creme fraiche out. And then if I needed to get more, I would take a clean spatula. Do you see what I'm trying to say? I'm not saying it very well. And then we're going to just paint the creme fraiche, which is a kind of a light, gorgeous sour cream on the top. And I wanna put just enough on here so that the crab is completely covered. This has been sitting out a little while while we were waiting today, but 
it will be a little bit thicker and easier to work with if you take it straight out of the refrigerator when you use it. Okay, so then the last thing we want to do is put our garnish on here, and I don't care if some gets on the plate. I just want to decorate the top of that, and actually it's kind of nice if some of it gets on the plate because then if you have any smudges on your plate, you won't see them. All right, and it, plus that looks pretty. Okay, now we're gonna make a little bit of salad to decorate this too, and I'll show you how to take this off in just a second, but first we wanna make our salad. So we don't need any more of the coriander. And what I'm gonna use today is two kinds of salad leaves. This one is red leaf lettuce, and this one is um, bib lettuce. And all I'm gonna do is make kind of like a chiffonade, roll these leaves up, and then cut them into a chiffonade, and then when I drop them, they look really pretty. You can do that with basil or other large leafed herbs too. But I don't want my salad to be just green, I wanna give it some interest, so I'll take this red leaf lettuce and do the same thing, and then mix some of it in with that. And then I've got a really pretty looking lettuce. Let's see if I can bring my plate back over here. Set it there. You don't have a lot of room here in the Flavor Secrets kitchen. And then I'm going to arrange my salad, sort of, did you see how I dropped it in a heap? So that it looked really pretty. Move my lettuce out of the way, and do you notice I'm scraping with the back of my knife and not the sharp side of my knife? The reason is that is that if I scrape with the sharp side of my knife, it'll dull my knife. And so I don't have, want to have to sharpen it really often. Um, as often as I could have if I used it this way, or I would have to if I used it this way. Okay, now we're gonna add some feta cheese. So I'm just taking a little block of this. I'll cut it in half, and then make some little dice here, some big dice, I should say, not little dice. Now you could arrange that on the side or however you want. I'm just going to distribute it throughout my salad. One little block is plenty. Okay, then I'll take my yellow beet and grab another knife here, I guess. Let's see, which knife do I want? I have so many knives, how about this one? And I'll make a little dice with my beet. I'll, this is a yellow beet, it doesn't stain as much as a red beet, so it's nicer to use in a salad like this. You could use the red beet, but then you'll get red goop all over, so I like to use the yellow, and I also like to use the yellow because it has a little bit milder taste. So I'm cutting this again into julienne, basically, and then down into dice. So that was just maybe a half of a yellow beet. The beet was peeled, and then I cooked it in boiling water, slightly boiling water, I should say, for maybe about 20 minutes until I could just get a fork into the beef. So I want it to be just a little bit firm to the touch. Okay, next I have an orange. All I've done so far is to peel the orange, and I want maybe uh, maybe a quarter of an orange per person. So we'll just cut some squares of orange. Arrange them around the salad on the top. And that's it for my salad. The only other thing I like to add to salad, I'm gonna wipe my fingers off before I stick them in the pepper, is a little pinch of pepper. Okay, and if you want to, you can take the pepper kind of out and around the plate, sort of makes it look more symmetrical. The last thing I'll do before I serve this to a guest is to drizzle it with a balsamic vinaigrette. Vinaigrette is really easy. It's basically three quarters of a cup of olive oil, a nice tasting, good extra virgin olive oil, and a quarter of a cup of a balsamic vinegar that you like that has a nice strong taste. And then I just put a little bit of salt and pepper in it and I stuck it in this little tube thing, so that I, or this little squirt bottle, I guess you call it, so that I could just con really control where the dressing goes, and those are cheap. I think you can get one probably for 50 cents at the drugstore. And the last thing I have to do is just to open up my ring and get rid of that, and to do that, I need a sharp knife, one of these smaller knives. Just a second, I have to rinse this off.
And then that's what I wanted this hot water for. Whenever you're cutting cake or you want to really separate something from something else like this, some cream from, from the, from the um, stainless steel, if you get your knife hot and then wipe it off, I've got a clean, a clean towel underneath here, and then while it's hot, take it around the edge. And all I have to loosen up here is the creme fraiche because the rest of it will come away just fine. Okay, now all I have to do is to lift this carefully off and I've got a really beautiful composed salad that would work well and be beautiful in any restaurant. Now I'm just going to add one more thing and that is a little bit of roasted asparagus. You don't have to add this but I had some and I thought it would be a nice touch. So we'll use these tongs just to move our asparagus over. And I chose an odd number of asparagus spears because odd numbers always look nice. And I put these in a 400 degree oven. I just brush them with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And then I put salt and pepper on them. Three would be nice or five would be nice, I think. I like the idea of five. Now who wouldn't be proud to serve that? Asparagus is really fresh and good right now. It's summertime in Michigan. And just a little maybe obscure fact that you didn't know, Oceana County in Michigan is the second largest asparagus producing region in the world. Second only to someplace in Peru. I don't know where. But anyway, what you've got here is an absolutely beautiful, fresh, delicious, composed salad, summertime lunch for, that anyone would love. Hope you'll give it a try. I'm Chef Lynn from the Flavor Secrets Kitchen. Enjoy. If you would like today's recipe, just email chef at flavorsecrets.com and request it. You can also review any episode by going to www.bloomfieldtwp.org. Click on Video on Demand on the right side of the screen and then click on Flavor Secrets to choose your episode. Enjoy!